no one cooks the way we cook and no one has the bounty of raw ingredients that we have. So to live and cook here is not only an exceptional experience, but people worldwide know about it. As I look back on my youth, I realized the gift God gave to False Family. I grew up learning how to fish, gather seafood, and cook every day of my life. Join me, Chef John Falls, as I cook up dishes honoring the age-old traditions of seafood and Louisiana's world-famous cuisine on hooks, flies, and alibis. Hooks, Lies, and Alibis is underwritten by Visit Baton Rouge, a longtime partner of this series and LPB. The capital city offers southern hospitality, cultural attractions, food, shopping, and fun. Information at visitbatonrouge.com. And by Audubon, Louisiana, working to conserve, restore, and protect important places for birds and people since 1924 and by the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting. Our mission is to tell Louisiana's story to the world. Louisianians of every age have a long-standing love affair with Grand Isle. Yes, we love to fish Venice and Cocodree too, and any number of other fabulous fishing areas for that matter, but ask any Louisianian about childhood vacations and they will have memories of Grand Isle. I still remember my dad packing all eight of us into his car filled with fishing lines, nets, cast iron pots, and seasonings and heading for a week in Grand Isle with about 50 other close friends and family. For generations, Grand Isle has been a favorite vacation spot. There's no else in the world that you can come with your family and, and come on the beach and put your kids running out there and put a little crab line like you and I were raised right, sure. and, and put a little chicken necks and catch live crabs right here. On, there's nowhere else in the world. Whether surf fishing, charter fishing, shrimping, crabbing, or floundering, a catch is certain. Grand Isle was inhabited as early as the 1700s but remains a small community with approximately 1,500 local residents. During the summer, the population swells to as many as 12,000. The island is littered with live bait shops, marinas, and boat launches. Camps with names like Making Memories dot the shoreline. Inshore charter services are available for redfish and speckled trout fishing, or charter an offshore boat for red snapper, king mackerel, tarpon, tuna, marlin, well, just about any fish you can name. Today, Grand Isle is home to the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries Marine Fisheries Laboratory. This 12,000 square foot state-of-the-art facility serves as a research hub for biologists, university researchers, and individuals engaged in marine fisheries field work. The underside of the lab building serves as a hatchery for both shellfish and fin fish. And being Louisiana's only permanently inhabited barrier island, Grand Isle is no stranger to the problem of coastal erosion. We are the front line of every vulnerable to all the storms like you see. And, and what happens is we, 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 we're the first ones, like this 12-foot levee that you see behind me, we've convinced the Corps to come in and, and put about $51 million to put a geo tool. And when we, we put this together, and then since that, all the hurricanes that hit the, the East Coast, believe it or not, since Sandy just hit the East Coast, they put the same tube that we put in Grand Isle. You know, what, we belong to America, as long as there's one grain of sand on that beach, we want to put our American flag down there, and we want to be proud Americans, and we want to save our coastline. Other barrier island settlements have been abandoned in recent history, as erosion has claimed more and more of the island area. Sadly, Louisiana's coastline is disappearing. Since the 1930s, Louisiana has lost more than 1.2 million coastal acres, and the total is mounting. Each year, another 15,300 acres are gone. While communities such as Grand Isle are threatened by this continuing loss, national assets are at risk too. Pipelines, navigation channels, fisheries and ecosystems, wetlands harbor plants and wildlife. They also act as sponges to buffer coastal erosion. Still, the wetlands are disappearing at an alarming rate. Some experts estimate that the area west of New Orleans across the Mississippi River is the fastest disappearing landmass on Earth. 
Estimated cost to restore and protect Louisiana's coastlands range from $100 billion to $150 billion. The problem of coastal erosion is overwhelming, yet every day of inaction, Louisiana sinks a little further into the sea. As Louisianians and Americans, we stand upon a historic threshold. Will we be the generation to stop coastal erosion and begin restoration of the wetlands, or will we watch as coastal Louisiana becomes part of the Gulf of Mexico? Tommy Vadrine is a good friend who's a regular at the fishing rodeos at Grand Isle. He even won the boat that he took me out on catching speckled trout. His sauteed specks with garlic and onion vinaigrette, hmm, that's the winner. Y'all, I'm standing here on this beautiful bay in Grand Isle with the absolute champion that I call when I'm looking for speckled trout fishing in Grand Isle, Tommy Vadrine. Tommy, thanks so much for taking me out onto the water today. That was just Thank great. Thank you now, for inviting me. Now, you know, we're, uh, describe this bay for me here. Where exactly are we? Because I think we were right close to here today, right? Yeah, well, the bay is Barataria Bay's on the uh, north side of us, and south side of us is Comedy Pass. So we were fishing in Comedy Pass on the rock jetties, one of my favorite spots. Um, and, and you know, I could just tell that you knew that the fish were there. I was saying to myself, he thinks like a fish. You know, he knows what's going on right here. You were you were baiting with live shrimp, and you made a few little changes, and then the fish started to hit. What makes this pass perfect for, uh, for speckled trout? The structure and the shrimp that go in and out of it with the tide makes that into those jetties spectacular all the time. A, a lot of good feeding going on in there. Well, this this is a, a speckled trout right here. And uh, what size is that right here? That's, That's a, beautiful. a very medium size. You know, we catch some real big ones, but it's probably too big for this plate, the ones I like to catch. <laughs> yeah, you like the troll fish. I like the big ones. I like the ones for the grill. This, those this, are best eating. This is a grilling fish right here. Perfect for whole grilling too. And all we've done, we've cleaned it out nicely. We've taken the scales off and we're gonna season it. You ready to help me season yeah, it? Yeah, sure. Here? Now this uh, to me really is, why don't you just go ahead and okay. uh, and, and put a little, a little salt. You can be generous with the salt and pepper. The great news about this fish, we're going right on to hot coals and nothing is better, I think, for whole fish than smoke and fire, especially when you're cooking it on the bones. And a lot of people are a little afraid, right, to cook a fish hat on and tail on. But this is the only way we used to do it in the old days. So just to, to show the whole fish, everybody wanted to know what they were eating and they could tell what fish. What about a little bit more on this side? And uh, I'm gonna put a little uh, uh, avocado oil that's flavored in orange. You know, fish love citrus. Do you use a lot of lemon and oh, lime? Oh yeah, my, my wife uh, loves to use okay. citrus. I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit of that beautiful oil in there. It's gonna be real nice. You can you can all, you can smell that orange uh, flavor, can't you? Yes, I can. I'm gonna it's put beautiful. A, I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, beautiful orange blossom vinegar. Just a touch of that on there as well. A little Creole seasoning. <clears throat> that'll uh, that'll make anything taste good. That's right. right. Now you just want to kind of pat it down. I like to season the inside too. You can put some herbs in there, but, <clears throat> but go ahead and put a little salt, a little pepper. 
And then hit some of those herbs in there. See the little herbs in that cup? That's a little thyme, tarragon, and you can put some on the outside too. Just go ahead and just sprinkle those herbs right on. Now, you can tell already that this fish is going to be nice, oh, and, nice and flavorful. Beautiful. Now, let me ask you one other question about fishing in these, uh, in these beautiful uh, waters here. Uh, we're talking about speckled trout today, but the array of fish in these salt waters here is just incredible. I asked you today to shout a couple of them out for me. Tell me, tell me the fish you were talking about today while I put this onto the grill. We're going to talk about speckled trout, redfish, pompano. All of those are spectacularly eating. That's probably my three favorite besides um, mangrove snapper and red snapper, which are caught offshore. The, 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 the pompano, the, the speckled trout, and the redfish are caught close. Uh, you know, and we catch some small mangroves that are legal, and we and, and we cook those like like some brim. You know, <laughs> we call them the saltwater brim. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, the array of fish out here, incredible, and of course that's why Grand Isle is so well known for its uh, for its fishing. I'm going to put a little bit of that same oil down in this skillet here, and if you would bring all of those flavors to me, uh, right here, just bring it bring it here, y'all. I'm going to make a quick little sauce with fresh tomatoes are going into it some julienne red and yellow bell peppers. Look at that garlic. Oh, you pretty. see that nice sliced what? garlic? Don't be bashful when Man, it comes to I garlic. I love garlic. Yeah, you like it? I love uh, garlic. A little bit, of course, of uh, asparagus tips. And of course, you can put corn, you can put beans, you can put anything you want in this beautiful, in this beautiful little sauce. The key is, you know, yeah, the key is you want it to look good and it's gonna taste good. Now, give me a little bit of salt and pepper in here, just a little bit, not too much. And uh, now I have some, I have some fish that's already been on the grill for quite a while. And if you just kind of move this one out of the way, I'm gonna take this beautiful little, yeah, you can just slide that out. And I'm gonna take this gorgeous little uh, platter here. And I'm gonna take, oh, well, oh, I tell that's you, pretty, I, huh? I just wish, I want everybody to just that's take pretty. a, oh, oh, <laughs> look at this, look at this, look at this. And if you think that's beautiful, no, it is, but just, Take a look at this. What? That's beautiful, huh? That, you know what this is? <laughs> huh? That's putting a little lipstick and rouge on them, huh? right there. <laughs> That's I tell, you, I, I tell you, you are a great, great guide for, for me today, but not only that, a great instructor, too. And you're the reason so many great fishermen come right here to fish speckled trout. Thank you so much. We're going to eat this one. Yeah, we're going to. Huh? Y'all can just kind of go away. We're going we're gonna to die. <laughs> <laughs> You always hear people talking about comfort food. Oh, I eat macaroni and cheese when I grew up. Oh, tomato soup with that garlic grilled cheese sandwich on a cold day, that's wonderful. Well, at Mr. Raleigh's house, comfort food was dried shrimp and potato stew. Oh, I tell you what, Bobby, nothing like the smell of oh, good dark good. brown roux, huh? That smells good. <laughs> Y'all, Bobby Collins here joining me, Louisiana Dried Shrimp Company. Now, let me tell you, there's a couple of traditions worth preserving in Louisiana, and one of them is right here. The beautiful Gulf shrimp of Louisiana. Now, what size is this before you dry them? Those are about 70, 80 counts. 70, 80 mm -hmm. count to a pound. And Bobby, I don't know how you got into drying these shrimp. They're like, uh, I'm gonna call them Cajun candy or popcorn. As a kid, I used to love to pull the little bags of these off the, oh, yeah. the counter and just shuck them into my mouth. <laughs> what a great flavor they are, concentrated shrimp flavor, right? Yep. Now, how did you get into the drying of shrimp in, uh, in your family? That was my grandfather that started in the business, and I just followed my father after him and myself. Right. Yeah. And uh, and is that I know there's still a lot of uh, I say a lot. There's still companies that either distribute or uh, uh, yeah. or, or certainly produce the product. Mm -hmm. I know you're one of the largest ones yeah. right there in Grand Isle, Louisiana. Right there in Grand now, Isle. Now, have you always been from that area? Oh, well, born and raised there. Born and raised. Born and raised. So, okay, so what we're going to do here is uh, I'm taking my dark brown roux, and you can smell that equal parts of oil and flour, y'all, right here. Now, Bobby, I'm going to take this. Uh, you can pick up that big tray for me and turn it around. I'm going to put all of those seasonings in here because you know what I'm doing? I'm doing everybody's favorite dish with dried shrimp. Oh, this yeah. is a this is a dried shrimp and potato stew. You talk, <laughs> you, talk about you talk about Cajun cooking. Look at the garlic going in there. See that? Huh? Now I'm going to just go ahead and 
stir that around a little bit. Now, let me ask you, what are, what, what are most people doing with the dry shrimp? I'm going to tell you some of the things I do with it, okay. but what, what are you finding people doing with the dry shrimp today? Oh, well, Cajun people eat them like that, but uh, a lot of Asian people eat them, they cook with them, they, we send them all over the country, and right. people enjoy them. Now, y'all, the tradition started with the Manila people, the, Philippine, the Filipinos who came to Louisiana back in the 1800s, yeah. built platforms over the Gulf of Mexico and dried the shrimp in the sun, and then they did a dance over the shrimp. Uh, don't to, say that sure that. <laughs> that's right, they would <laughs> dance to break the shells off because there's no shells on the shrimp. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to take these, they're going to basically rehydrate some right. when I put them into the dark brown roux here. Uh, and what, what, how would you describe the flavor here of oh, the shrimp? Nothing better. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> it has a good, good salty flavor to it, yeah. Now, now the process is just uh, to, to dip the fresh shrimp in boiling salt water just for right. a couple of minutes yeah. and then dry them over heat until uh, the shells just kind of crack off. That's a yeah. process that takes a few hours. Yeah, quite a few hours, uh, yeah. And, uh, and these are being distributed pretty much around the, uh, uh, around the country now. All around the country, yeah. yeah. Now the roux and the shrimp are gonna go in here. I'm gonna put, this is a nice shrimp stock. Nice shrimp stock going right into the pot like that. And I tell you, I love to use this shrimp. I make potato salad with the dried shrimp, y'all. I love to put it right on top of potato salad. One of the things I love the most, we're gonna show in just a minute, using the powder yeah. of the shrimp. The shrimp powder is fantastic. Y'all, the roux is thickening here. I'm gonna add all of the potatoes. Now you can tell by looking at this dish that this is really a dish of the fishermen. The fishermen would have brought potatoes onto the boat. The dry, dehydrated, uh, yeah. dehydrated shrimp would have uh, kept for, for months at a time. Sure thing, yeah. Boil eggs, y'all, just more protein going into the pot. Remember when they did yeah. this? A lot of times we just crack them. We just crack the eggs into the pot as well. The boiled eggs, the potato, you see how that's going in? That's Bobby, good. why don't you give me that green onions right there and you can just, you can just grab those and put a, a couple handfuls down in here. Y'all, this is gonna go ahead and simmer and it's gonna cook just for about, I would say an hour or so. The shrimp will pick up all that beautiful stock. They'll rehydrate. The potatoes will soften and add a little starch to it. And Bobby, once this is done, look how beautiful. <laughs> looking look how good. Nice. Isn't that nice? Now let me show you what we do with it. Y'all come on into this beautiful yellow container here. Look at that. <laughs> I have some rice. Now if you don't think this is a hearty dish, I want you to take a look at that, huh? That's good eating. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, talk about fit for the gods. Look at that right there. And I'm going to just put a little pinch of parsley right on top of it into the bowl. And I'm going to tell you, this is absolutely a fantastic dish made with this guy's dried <laughs> shrimp from Grand Isle, Louisiana. Unbelievable. That's just good stuff. Great, great. Uh, talk about good stuff. <laughs> Y'all, I don't want you going anywhere. We have another dish coming up using the dried shrimp in a different fashion, and you certainly don't want to miss that, especially the chefs out there huh? and the good cooks. Isn't that great? Have you ever seen all of those dried rubs in the grocery store for meat, poultry, and fish? Clean them out of your cabinet. There's no better seasoning than dried shrimp powder. All right, Bobby, we have a new guest that's just arrived on the set. I, 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 you talk about his sweet lady sister, Dulce Maria. How are you doing, sister? Fine, wonderful, thank From you. From the Cypress Springs Mercedarian Prayer Center, right next door to the beautiful dock in, the, in, the, in this fireplace here at uh, White Oak, and it's so nice to have you with us thank cooking you, today. Thank you, John. It's nice uh, to be here. Uh, and Bobby does beautiful dried shrimp. I call these Cajun popcorn sister from uh, from Grand Isle and uh, look at that uh, and uh, you talk about great flavor. Now let me tell you what we're going to do Bobby. Uh, we've done a dish with a dried shrimp which we have right here in front of sister which is a nice potato and shrimp stew. A very uh, old dish from the uh, swamps of Louisiana but now I want to show you a new dish that I'm going to be doing. This right here is a beautiful Sniper fillet. This is the best of fish. Sister, this fish was swimming. I hate to say this, but just this morning. Um, <laughs> now, so I'm going to put this right here with a little bit of the shrimp powder. Now, Bobby, tell us about the shrimp powder because it's the dried shrimp that mm -hmm. that has gone through another process. Yeah. 
All that is, that, that dried shrimp just ground it down. Just ground down yep. into a powder. Dry and it concentrates the flavor, sister. When you put it down on the fish like this, the fish now takes on a beautiful shrimp flavor as well as part of the coating. So, Bobby, give me a little bit of that oil right there. And I'm going to put a little touch of the oil in here. Now, sister, you were from, uh, you are uh, originally from Corpus Christi, Texas, which of course is on the water. That's right. And uh, now, did you come from a fishing family yourself? Yes, we did. My father used to love to go fishing, and they go sea, deep sea fishing. And they would come home with hundreds of fish. He yep. and that group of men would go, and they'd come home with hundreds of fish. And then my mom would, wrap up that fish, and all the neighborhood would have fish <laughs> that day. <laughs> so, well, hey, look, I bet, I bet she was a great cook, too, huh? Oh, she really was. Now, Bobby, there's a lot of dolphin uh, uh, swimming in, uh, in and around the Gulf. Uh, thank sure you, probably does. right out of the back of your building. Oh, yeah. But, uh, uh, sister, you have a very special affection for dolphin. Now, not the one we eat, but, uh, uh, but, but that, that dolphin that is so often associated with saving sailors, etc., and it's also a sign of your ministry. Yes, the dolphin, um, the Lord call, calls the dolphin the dancing fish because um, it is so joyful in the water. Now, sister, what I've done, I've taken the dried shrimp right. powder. Now, you know, I know all the chefs out there are saying, what is he doing? But look how beautiful this is. Concentrated flavor. Now, Bobby, I want you to put the butter in here because we're gonna make a quick sauce. Dump it down in there. Oh, yeah, right there. Now, you see how, sister, you see how, look, you talk about hot, huh? Yeah, oh, see that? Uh, that? That's how you know, that's how, that's how you know you're really cooking, sister. Huh? And you notice I wasn't afraid here, huh? No, but I was. <laughs> okay, Bobby, let's go ahead in with all of that. We're going to put the undoing sausage. We're going to put the crab meat, just dump it all in there, every bit of it. Everything see, going in. Yeah, oh, yeah. Now, 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 you see this, uh, the, the novice would have backed away from this, sister, you know? Uh -huh. uh, just, uh, not a crab meat. We're making a great bur kajan, nice Cajun oh, butter. Kajan. That's why it flamed up so much right now. <laughs> so we're going to just swirl that around like that. And uh, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, now you put that nice hot sauce in there. Uh, now, now, Bobby, one other thing I want to ask you. How, how uh, thriving, let's say, is the dry shrimp business? Is there still a lot of people doing it? Is there still a lot of people creating this wonderful product? Not as many as they used to. Yeah. But we're gonna hopefully we'll keep going with it. But it's still in the grocery stores and oh, it's yeah. still available to folks all over the place. So, uh, and, and one of the things I love about it, it's a unique flavor. It's a tradition that we're trying to keep alive in Louisiana and an industry that we're trying to protect as well. Dried shrimp, we find it everywhere, but I tell you what, you ought to be looking for it as well. <laughs> so now I need a, a sister, you see this? Uh, Nice fish I have here. Remember my sauce that was burning a minute ago? Right. It's a masterpiece now, huh? Look at that. <laughs> Look at that, the crab meat, I'm burying the fish in all of that beautiful sauce. Uh, how you like that, huh? That looks good. And look at that, that nice Cajun butter. I'm gonna turn this fire off right here. And now I'm gonna put that down right there in front of sister. And I, I'll tell you what else I need to do. I have one other little fish when I come back I want to show y'all, you're not going to believe the next dish I'm going to have for you, so you don't want to go anywhere. I know this was exciting enough, right? Yeah. Uh, sister? It looks yummy. Okay. It really does look good. It looks yummy. We'll be back in a minute. <laughs> Beautiful. Some people might wonder why we have a drink called a hurricane. Well, we've survived some of the worst natural disasters you can imagine. Louisianians, you just can't blow us away. Okay, sister, y'all take care of this uh, uh, hurricane punch. I'm gonna run and get a little oh, dish, okay? Thank you. <laughs> huh? Take a look at that. This one was made just for sister, Ooh, huh? Beautiful. Look at that beautiful red snapper, sister. This fish is just absolutely exquisite. And I'm actually gonna put a little bit of the dried shrimp powder on top of it as an additional flavor. And all I have to do is to take my knife and just cut it right off. It's been cooking on that wood fire for about, oh, I guess about four hours. This is a about a 10 pound fish. And of course, all you have to do is 
put it over that oak fire and it's just absolutely beautiful. And this is a center of the table fish. You just serve it on the board with foods outside. Magnific uh, magnificent dish, I think a really beautiful and the fish is cooked all the way to the bone with all that beautiful seasoning. So y'all, we have the red snapper cooked over the wood fire. We have this beautiful filet of fish pan sauteed with the shrimp powder seasoning yeah. on top of it and a little crab meat burk kaja on top of that. A little punch of me, what else could we possibly want other than our potato stew, right? Sister, thank you so much for being with us here today. And y'all, let me tell you something. Thank you all so much for stopping by as we grilling fish. And when it comes to fresh fish and great seafood, there's no place like Louisiana Sportsman's Paradise. We want to see you next time for another tasty edition of Hooks, Lies, and Alibi. Hooks, Lies, and Alibis is underwritten by Visit Baton Rouge, a longtime partner of this series and LPB. The capital city offers southern hospitality, cultural attractions, food, shopping, and fun. Information at visitbatonrouge.com. And by Audubon, Louisiana, working to conserve, restore, and protect important places for birds and people since 1924. And by the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting. Our mission is to tell Louisiana's story to the world. For a copy of John Folsa's cookbooks and more, call the number on your screen or visit www.lpb.org slash Fulse.